Welcome to the Wingfall Experience podcast. And today we have Tim Taudin in the show. He is uh, one of the guys from the Kiel crew in north, uh, north of Germany. He is a, a pretty, pretty good rider and he has no water sports background at all. I find that very interesting because uh, most of the people um, that are pushing the limits in wing falling are coming from windsurfing or at least kiting or maybe uh, some other water sports disciplines. So that's super cool. Today we talked about how Tim teached himself what he learned on the way and especially because he had no water sport background, how he did that. And we talked about a lot of other interesting things like backflips, like um, a leash setup, what you can do um, because now it's getting colder, at least in, in, in our part of the world in Europe. Uh, and uh, it's getting colder on the water, in the water, and what you can do to prevent cold hands, stuff like that. Check this episode out. And as always, if you want to get in touch, do that. Shoot me some uh, some key per people that you want to hear and listen to on the podcast. Shoot me some questions. And as always, enjoy the show with Tim Taudin. Welcome to another Wingfall Experience podcast. And I just said to Tim, who is my guest today, hello, Tim. How are you? Hey, good morning. I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm good. I, I just uh, said, what are you doing to me? Because we are recording at 7 a.m. in the morning. And then you said uh, that it was actually your idea. And I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, great that you take the time. Yeah, uh, sure. And you're really highly requested. Uh, uh, I, I get, I already got a lot of messages. When do you record with Tim Taudin? Um, so finally, <laughs> we are doing it. <laughs> oh, really? I'm surprised. <laughs> I guess that's probably uh, a lot of people um, from Germany because, yeah, you kind of, I would say, uh, 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 no offense there, yeah, but a, a, a new star, you know, in the in the wing falling scene in Germany, <laughs> and uh, a lot of people came across um, your wing foil uh, Instagram, I guess. So, yeah, actually, it grew a little bit. Yeah, uh, I think I had like no followers before, <laughs> so like 50 people or something like that. Uh -huh. And now I'm thinking, I think I have something like 650 or so, which is. Uh -huh. Not much, but yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's 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 a. Uh, I mean, the wing falling scene is probably still pretty small. At least, uh, if you really think about the guys who are really doing it, and and of course all the, the girls uh, that are doing it like uh, full on. So uh, yeah, you you really get to know uh, easily uh, the guys who are pushing the sport, and I guess you're one of them, and that's something we want to talk about today, but. Before we head into all that stuff, let's introduce yourself. So is, if someone did not request Tim Daudin, which is <laughs> very <laughs> unlikely, uh, what do you Absolutely. do? Uh, yeah, my name is Tim Taudin. Um, I'm from Kiel, Germany. And yeah, for my daily living, I'm a project manager and I'm working full time and Yeah, I've got a family, I'm married, I've got two kids, they are three and five. And yeah, my my new hobby, let's say, is wing foiling, yeah, which I started almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. So you're coming from the German, uh, let's say, Kiel is the capital of winging. <laughs> yeah, it really is, I think. Um, You can see here so many people on the water. We have a spot on the east side, a spot on the west side of the bay, of the Kiel mm -hmm. Bay. And currently there are around 25 to 30 people on the water on each spot, at mm -hmm. least at our spot, which I uh, see regularly. And it's mm -hmm. really getting crowded. So I remember mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the winter before, last winter, uh, we were like one or two people on the water. <laughs> Last winter, there were like four to five, maybe, yeah, people on the water. And now there are 30 people on the water. So that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we uh, we also discussed that um, in a previous podcast that uh, also in I at least from my imp impression in Hawaii, uh, San Francisco, Kiel, there are some hotspots where ringing was really early to explode. Um, and that's very interesting. So what do you think? What changed? What what people are coming to the beach with wingful gear now? Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people realized that it's a, a perfect opportunity to get on the water in nearly every conditions. Mm -hmm. And so, and I know you discussed it before, um, the con most of the time the conditions are not suitable for windsurfing. And some people, I think they, it's, it's too complicated for them to start kiting with the lines and all that stuff. And yeah, to learn how to fly the kite and all that stuff. I, mm -hmm. I must, uh, say that I just think it is like that because mm -hmm. I'm not kiting or windsurfing. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but they see, um, how easy it is to start or comparable easy it is to start green foiling and they are talking to each other and they exchanging their experience and they say, Hey, it's so much fun. You can turn every spot into, uh, uh, yeah, a, a wing, wing, wing paradise. I say you can have mm -hmm. so much fun on flat water waves and that's what brings the people on the water. Mm -hmm. So kind of snowball been... effect. Yeah. Uh, you have been also to Tarifa lately, right? So we were in touch um, via Instagram, and and when I was leaving, you were arriving. Uh, what what do you think about a, a spot like Tarifa, where water sports is huge? I mean, it's all about kiting and windsurfing and stuff. I I don't feel that winging is exploding there, or is it? Yeah, actually, I was on holidays with my family. Um... We, we had an apartment close to Malaga, which is not the windiest spot um, mm -hmm. on the Mediterranean. But um, yeah, I took my wing gear with me and we yeah decided to go to Tarifa for like two days, and one night mm -hmm. stay, because I was very curious to see the spot, to see um, Playa Chica, where the World Tour is competing <coughs> and to, to go winging with the locals over there like Michael Rosmeier or Fabi Muntala. And yeah, my my experience there or my impression there was ah, it's it's completely different than here. You have really constant powerful Levante wind. <laughs> and um, I think the conditions there are most of the time more suitable for for other sports. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, And that's that's maybe the difference, and even the the style and the gear that the guys use over there is complete. Yeah, it's not completely different, but it's different compared to what we use here in yeah. lighter winds and gusty winds and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, as I said, I went out for like two sessions. One was pretty light on on a four meter wing. That was with Michael Rosmeyer. It was still fun. Um, we were on, I hope, I hope I can pronounce it right. Playa Valde Vaqueros. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> right about. Yeah. It's a, actually a very nice beach and there's a little lagoon and the kids were playing on the lagoon with my wife and it was pretty hot. Yeah. And the wind was nice and we had some fun. And the other session I was, uh, with Fabi Muntala at Playa Chica and mm -hmm. it was completely different. I tried to go out with my 3.5 and was completely overpowered. Then I took my 3-meter three, th three wing and was still completely overpowered. <laughs> and yeah, it was choppy, no waves, but yeah, impressive how hard and uh, constant the wind is blowing over there. And yeah, I think that's what, what make them using different gear. So they use very small boards, surfer boards, or small skywing boards, 35, 45 liters. And yeah, that's, that's the difference. And even mm -hmm. it's, they're developing a different kind of tricks there or training different tricks because the wind is so hard. So mm -hmm. um, 
that's yeah. that's cool yeah yeah i i feel a little bit like uh since since my tarifa trip i mean i've been a a, a lot of times to tarifa mostly for kiting sometimes for surfing and the winter you can catch some decent swell also there um but I felt like if I would live there, I would have probably not started winging as much as I did it now. I mean, I would have probably tried it a couple of times and maybe also got into it, but not like full on because, and that's maybe the, yeah, something that makes it so interesting is it turns actually not so good conditions into very good conditions and it makes your life cool if you can drive close to the beach and if you don't have to walk too far, like on some spots in Denmark, for instance, or, or Tarifa, you really have a long walk. Um, I remember one session Tarifa where we had like, I would say a kilometer walk and it's like, oh, it's really? tiring. Yeah. So with it's like, of... like Aga in Denmark. When yeah, you don't exactly. Go in directly uh, through the short break and make your turn around the long mole. Uh, you also have to do a long walk there, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So these are the spots where I wish I would have my wave kiting gear with me. <laughs> 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 Because then you just have a backpack and a very small board. <laughs> yeah. What did you want to say? Oh, actually, uh, nothing, but <laughs> it's, 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 it's funny. I mean, it's a different kind of story there. I mean, You are surfing on Playa Chica, and on the other side, they are doing kite loops all, the whole day long. You know, mm -hmm. it's very it's firing up there the whole day. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes we get also some strong winds here, so we are pretty much used to that. But it's nearly all every day very very windy over there. That was very, mm -hmm. really impressive, and I think that might be not the perfect conditions for winging. It's it's yeah. it's okay, but. Uh, it's it's pretty extreme. Uh, I like it to go out on a three five with solid power in the wing. That's absolutely fine, and uh, even the three uh, three zero is fine. But when it's getting overpowered, mm. it's it's maybe a little bit too strong for for training new moves. Yeah. Um, then maybe yeah, like kiting, doing kite loops or windsurfing is a little bit more suitable. Yeah. What What do you think? Where is the overpower coming from? Is it just a wing size thing? Because I also feel it's certainly sometimes coming from my foil that I cannot... But but what, what is your opinion? Yeah, that's definitely a point. Um, you need to get rid of the power from the wing. And you're doing that by, uh, yeah, over your foil. Yeah, and if your foil is not able to accelerate properly, you're not getting rid of the power in the wing. So, oh, sorry, here's something popping up. No worries. Um, and that's, um, yeah, why you should just ride a smaller foil um, to release that power of the wing on the water to go even faster, let it go. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's also a point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I sometimes feel like in the really strong days, I was not able to achieve my full speed on my foil. Like I could go way faster in lower winds and that, that was kind of, but I don't know what, what I'm doing wrong. Do you have any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I felt the same a couple of times. And that's just, I think when the wing is completely overpowered, And the it doesn't work anymore like it was designed to. So mm -hmm. and the the um, the air is not flowing properly around the wing anymore. And yeah, that's what slows you down and does not allow you to accelerate anymore. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's pretty much it. And so mm -hmm. you have to switch to a smaller wing, which also has a smaller um leading edge um which mm -hmm. um is for sure faster i mm. think you also already discussed that um uh some racing gear is coming up and maybe racing gear has a very thin profile to go very fast but it's yeah, it's obviously not available yet 
But even the smaller wings, they have uh, smaller, smaller leading edges, which allow yeah. for higher speeds. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I'm, especially in our conditions, um, when it's when the wind is really strong, um, it's also very gusty. Um, so what I rarely see is <laughs> steady strong wind, like they have uh, with Levante sometimes. They have 40 knots and it's blowing like 38 to 45. Uh, they call it gusty and it is gusty. But compared to our conditions, it's probably not that gusty. Yeah. Uh, so what I feel is like if I go to a smaller wing, I really sometimes have problems with the low end. That if I uh, have the smaller wing, which is suitable in the gas, I'm really pumping hard to get it up uh, when there's no gas. And so uh, any any tips for that? Uh, because it's a smaller profile, makes it also less pumpable, right? Yeah, for sure. I've got... We also have pretty often very gusty conditions here. I'm pretty sure that we have more wind and stronger wind, but it's also very gusty because when it's coming from southwest, it's coming over the land, it's going through the city here, and then it's uh, hitting the hitting the bay or the beach. And mm -hmm. and I've got, you know, my rule is um, if you are thinking to take the, for example, a smaller wing or a bigger wing, in gusty conditions, take the bigger wing. Mm -hmm. It's easier to withstand the gusts, which last like a minute, sometimes 30 seconds, 10 seconds for these uh, one minute, then to pump the whole day, five minutes long in, in, in low winds. And you will definitely learn more when you're on the foil. It's more important to, to sail and to be on the foil than to have the proper wing in the gusts. So... Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my, my recommendation is here, do not choose your gear um, by, the, by the power of the gas. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. choose your gear by the, the, the steady wind that is coming in. Yeah. All right. So we were talking um, about you and uh, what, what sports did you do before winging mostly? Mm, actually, no wind, uh, wind powered sports, water sports. Uh -huh. um, I was a skateboarder when I was a teenager. So I also competed in a couple contests there and wow. doing a couple of tricks. And yeah, I was skateboarding the whole day long when I was a teenager with all my, my buddies here. And some buddies are also started wing falling as well now. Mm -hmm. But I really had did nothing, nothing really on the water. I was paddling a little bit around the bay with my SUP, and that's it, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So that, that's an interesting thing. Uh, but before we dive into that, like uh, I was skating also a little bit, but probably not as as good as you did. But uh, how many injuries did you have over the years, or have you been one of the lucky guys? Actually, I was one of the lucky guys. I never oh, really? broke anything. I've got uh, several scars and some uh, piece of uh, little pieces of my my bones on my legs is is missing, but not really. I have not really ha hadn't had some bad injuries, so I was pretty lucky. So. That was what is was good, but I guess I was more flexible when I was a teenager and <laughs> could sustain more crashes. Today, <laughs> when I go out um, skateboarding in a bowl with my little ones or something like that, I I always hurt myself. Um, when I fell, especially on my hands, uh, I have uh, pain for like three days, something like that. So <laughs> that's uh, that's why I know today's I, I use protectors on my hands and the helmet um, mm -hmm. because um, I don't really want to have my my hands broken or something like that because yeah. I cannot work, cannot serve. Yeah. 
Na, yeah, nice uh, that you have been lucky. So I, I remember at least uh, one or two times where I couldn't sit for weeks <laughs> 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 because I was uh, working on a on a rail slide and I and I couldn't figure it out. So I was standing uh, during uh, lunch with my mom and my brother. <laughs> and he, <laughs> uh, okay, so like a handrail? <laughs> we're going down a handrail or? Just it flat, was a, like just a flat. small rail, and we had kind of a skate park okay. uh, back then, and, uh, and and I and I and I couldn't figure out how to how to tail slide uh, uh, this rail. It was a double rail, so actually it should have been easy, but it wasn't for me. My friends could do it, and I was always crashing hard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But uh, that yeah, that's that, that's part of the game. I mm. also landed on a handrail and stuff like that so but i was though most of the time pretty lucky yeah so I, but you, i think um yeah. skate uh, maybe one thing i i can say i think when you skateboarding when you do skateboarding and you skate pretty hard mm -hmm. it's sometimes a little bit comparable with wing falling because you when you do tricks where you um, let's say must commit. <laughs> hmm. um, it's it's that mindset that you that you that you need that you that well maybe that I evolved during my time of skateboarding that you really have to commit to do that trick. I mean you cannot hmm. jump on a handrail and then say oh during flight uh, I better kick the board away and yeah do something else. So whether you go on the handrail or not. Mm -hmm. So, and that's about commitment, yeah. And that's what mm -hmm. you learn in skateboarding, I think, pretty much. Or when you do a big kick flick over, a, over an obstacle, I mean, you need to catch, flip the board, catch it, and land it. And mm -hmm. you're flying like two, three meters, I don't know. You really have to commit to go back on the board. And yeah. that, that is um, they're creating a mindset that you that you are able to commit mm -hmm. i i was just remembering the first time that i dropped into a ramp uh with a skateboard and uh, that's probably the same. first time you come across something like that right same thing when you're dropping uh, in a quarter pipe or half pipe or whatever with maybe with a word part or even just a regular quarter quarter pipe for the first time You need to commit. You need to lean forward and go down the ramp. And if you're hesitating, you will fall because you're doing a wheelie really and then you're falling on your back or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I, rem I remember my friend who was kind of teaching me. I mean, in skateboard, there is no real teaching, right? I mean, uh, skateboarding is something you, you just learn by figuring it out and asking maybe, but there's no school or... Uh, At least I didn't come across them when I was young. <laughs> um, and yeah. my friend told me, you have to, when you, when you push down the board with your front foot, you have to hear the, you know, there was a board hitting, hitting the, the, um, the ramp. And, and that, that was like for me, because he knew I would probably not commit enough in my first attempt you know so he he kind of pushed me to over commit to the trick and that really helped because <laughs> <laughs> then you're yeah. you're pushing hard enough yeah and um yeah speaking about teaching so how did you then come across uh, wing falling i mean uh, what what intrigued you to, to give it a try with your best skateboard background oh well, actually um the story is like this <laughs> um i was um jogging here uh, uh, around the bay i was out for a run and i saw one guy or yeah one guy on the water and i think it was class class mm -hmm. or Henning, i don't remember and it was in what was it april may 2019 mm -hmm. yeah and yeah that they, they were yeah they were flying around the bay And I was just stopping by and I already uh, knew class from the beach because um, during summertime, we're all hanging out here on the beach and um, 
yeah, our wives met on the beach, our children were playing on the beach, and so I knew class from there. And now I'm, and I stopped by and was just watching them um, mm-hmm. winging in the bay. And instantly I had a, like, there was a little cinema in my head on how to say <laughs> what what is all possible with this sport. Um, and that's what um, increased my interest in this sport. And I was thinking about the pros that you have when you go on the water. Okay, when you fell, it's soft in the water. It, I can do it very close to my home here. It's like the spot is like 600 meters from here. Mm-hmm. So I can, I can go by bike or even walk to the spot. And I already knew that it's possible to jump. They were, uh, in this time, they were riding strapless. Um, but I knew it's possible to jump. And I knew it's it's going through the roof from the first time. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, what uh, made me, yeah, thinking about to start this sport. And for sure, then yeah. then I, I, I thought to start it and I researched the equipment and I talked to class, I talked to Henning later on, but mainly to, to class on this time. And yeah, then I was thinking, okay, should I invest in that sport? And finally, yeah, I decided, uh, decided to, to do it and um, get me some equipment. Mm-hmm. And I think my equipment arrived then back in October. <laughs> 2019 and yeah crazy took a while before we before we dive into that uh, what what i what i what i was wondering is i mean you live close to the beach so there is probably also sometimes some windsurfing or kiting going on i mean not that much probably in the bay but but around your i mean around keel but why have you never been intrigued to to kiting or windsurfing Yeah, that's a really good question that I asked my myself um, because I think it it was um, it is pretty expensive to to start kiting and windsurfing and back when I was young I had not that much money and yeah I was not really into 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 windsurfing and kiting I just focused on skateboarding and that was pretty affordable for everyone and yeah and even my my family did not really promote water sports um like maybe other families do so most of the kids on the water have daddies or mommies uh with a water sports background Mm -hmm. and yeah i think it's more probable that they start water sports than yeah people um, than than kids who have uh, no parents with water sport backgrounds. So yeah, yeah. My sister was doing horse riding. I was playing soccer, um, skateboarding, and stuff like that. So yeah, maybe that's that's the reason. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so you you came across class pretty early, actually. Huh? I mean, uh, May 2019, there were probably just a couple of wings in Germany, maybe maybe only one. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, so. yeah. So you have been probably one of the first guys who had some um, some real production equipment. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned before. I, took a while um, that I decided to really um, go ahead and order equipment uh-huh. and I don't know the shop where I ordered my first wing but it was a five meter tone wing and yeah the echo I don't really know if no no it was uh, the one before the foil ah. wing ah okay mm-hmm. yeah and this red blue color I don't know if you mm-hmm. remember it <laughs> and I don't really know if I was one of the first who got production gear, but yeah, maybe, maybe at least in the top 10, something like that. Mm-hmm. 
And and what foil and what board did you get back then? Um, actually, I I started with a big board from from Gong. Uh huh. How how so, big was it? Um, well, it was like 110 liter, I think. I That's think not 110. Too big. It was pretty big, yeah. <laughs> not not too big. I think it was pretty big. Mm -hmm. yeah. But and, uh, uh, I think it's a 2,000 square centimeter foil, and then I downsized to a smaller one as well. And the year, and I think in in March or April, I switched to Fanatic Skywing 54 with 85 liters, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a 2,000. 2000 square centimeter surfboard and then 1500. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now, as a 5.4 has 95 liters, but maybe in this year it had 85, right? Uh, 5.4, yeah, I don't... <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. Oh. That, I, you're I right. mean, it doesn't matter. So, yeah. But I mean, and what what are you writing now? Like, what is your button breader uh, board, so to say? Yeah, a bread and butter. So. Oh, I currently I switched to the four eights with sixty liters. Uh huh. So that's what I'm using most of the time, and um, I don't think I need a much smaller board mm -hmm. because um, yeah, the comfort is. Um, Is good with the 60 liter board. So I'm weighing like 83 kilograms. So mm -hmm. I can sit on the board and if I get instant power in the wing, I can easily start it. Mm -hmm. But I also tried 45 liters and that's a little bit more difficult to start even uh, because you need constant full power wind to go mm -hmm. with this board with my weight. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise it's too exhausting. So, but I was writing long time the uh, five zero with uh, 75 liters which is a very mm -hmm. good board um and to me it's now for me it's now a lightning board because mm -hmm. yeah but what is your weight it's like 83 okay depends 83 kilo kilograms. so with gear like uh, like your wing and your wetsuit you're probably around 86 87 88 something like that yeah Yeah. Okay. Uh, interesting. Uh, I I still feel like I I don't know what the future brings, but I still feel like um at least uh in the in the mainland um where I mostly wing, I still need a little bit more volume. I, in Tarifa, I had a 75 liter board and it was fine. In Tarifa, I I, I was thinking I could also probably ride a smaller board. Okay. Um, but here. And then I thought about, oh, no, I, because I have the 5.4 with 95 liters now, and I'm about 75, 78 kilos, um, and I thought ah, I should have taken the team edition, the 5.2 with 85 liters, would have been better, blah, blah, blah. And now I had a couple of sessions here, and I thought, no, 95 is perfect, because even on some good days, sometimes the wind just drops, and... Uh, And then I have to really, then I'm really struggling. And on the 95 liters, I can still stand, you know, and pump the wing a little bit to get back to shore. And then, yeah, it's just more pleasant. Yeah. And I, yeah, that, that's, that's not possible for me with a 60 liter board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously. But you're coming in more gusts. And I, I think I, I needed just a short gust and I'm up flying. So, and nice. I can go back. But, It happens that I have have to pedal back, <laughs> and it happens. <laughs> so then you had your gear, and 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 then what 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 did you do? Did you just go to the beach and teach yourself, or did you ask class for it? Or did yeah, you, uh... it uh, um, for sure. Um, I ordered a wing here and a board there, and um, I got my wing first. So skateboarding it's not. It, it no. <laughs> I no? thought about it, um, but yeah, as I mentioned, I, I received my wing first, and uh -huh. I think a couple of weeks later, maybe four, five, six weeks later, I received the board. Mm -hmm. So 
I had the wing and I was um, very motivated to learn <laughs> that stuff. And so I went out um, here on the beach and tried it with the SUP, I think two times, three times when, when there was proper wind, trying to, to get um, familiar with the wing. And yeah, then I think class came to me or I asked class if I can try it to surf on the foil be behind a boat. Mm -hmm. And then he took me for a spin and yeah. And I managed to, to, to fly on, on the fall in the first session behind the boat. Wow. And so without water sport so, experience, without foil yeah. experience in the first session, you were falling. Yeah. To okay. me, to me, it, the, the, the star was a little bit tricky yeah. on, on, on the, on the board. With a with a bar in one hand and that stuff because I was not doing that very often before I was uh, I was wakeboarding for a couple of times but yeah and the start is a little bit different with a surf fall board behind a boat than with a wakeboard and um, so that was a little bit tricky in the beginning but when I was on the board it was no problem so from the beginning I was pretty. Um, Pretty comfort. I felt pretty comfortable on the on the foil mm -hmm. because maybe from my, my my board experience and all that stuff. So it was more a uh, challenge to to fly the wing actually, which is no challenge for windsurfers. <laughs> they mm -hmm. most of the time, I guess, they have more trouble with the foil. But the foil felt pretty pretty stable, neutral for me. Uh, uh, yeah, it was it was okay. So. And right. then I, after that, um, when all my gear arrived, I started to train here in the bay um, with my wing and my my board. And I think it took me one one session to get on the foil. One two, th one or two sessions, I don't remember really. So yeah, then I was already flying, and then yeah. tr trying to improve and jibe and tag and do all that stuff crazy and you probably didn't know what a jibe is and what a tag is by the time because uh, if you don't have a water sport background i mean the terms are probably not familiar right uh no actually no i had to look it up a couple of times what is a jibe what is a tag and i just saw it from from class and hey what they are doing or and I was trying to copy that <laughs> and, and, and yeah, even when they talk about all that windsurf legends, kite legend, I don't really know them. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. Like Ralf Bach Schuster and I don't know what they are talking all about. <laughs> so no disrespect for all these people who, uh, are, uh, yeah, very good sportsmen. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually, I, I didn't know that <laughs> and I didn't know the, all, the name for all the tricks. So, yeah. And it's today when they're talking about killer loop, cheese roll and uh, I don't know, flaka and I have to look it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 so the cool thing is that I, I think like a, a Tim Ferriss said once that you were, Uh, the average of your uh, of the five people that you spend the most time with, um, which is an interesting fact and like uh, something that 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 I find very interesting about Kiel is there are so many former pro windsurfers or or you know like <laughs> even or also sailors. There, I mean, there are a lot of. I mean, in Germany there are a lot of uh, uh, sailors uh, hanging around there and the training and stuff and. It's it's unbelievable. So if you have such a peer group, um, you're you probably yeah. have a, a way more progressive learning curve because I mean if you are surrounded by guys who are training the latest shit, um, you probably don't think about it that much. Like when you're hanging in a skate park with uh, Tony Hawk and a couple of other dudes, and uh, you just think, okay, that's that's how skating is done. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, it's that's that's absolutely right. I mean, you observe the others. You're trying to copy the moves. You're trying to to I would not say compete with them, but mm-hmm. yeah, at least you you if you're a little bit motivated, you want to get as good as them, and that's yeah. what what um, pushes yourself. Yeah. I mean, and Henning was, uh, later on, he was doing, like, ollies or jumps uh, with a star plus board and all that stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. he very early showed was what's possible with that gear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think then, then they put on straps on the board and then it's... <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, crazy. Um, yeah, I can... I can uh... Let, let's maybe summarize a little bit your learning experience. So you got you got your wing first, and you um, but you didn't practice with the wing, right? You you uh, went wake foiling. I practiced with the wing on the SUP a couple ah, of times okay. because I had I had an SUP and I had a wing, but I had mm-hmm. no wing board and no foil. Mm-hmm. So and it was windy, and I saw a couple of as a and I saw class and anything, and they were cruising around, and I said, okay. Um, it is what it is the best gear is what you have <laughs> I go out mm-hmm. on my SAP and at least I cruise a little bit with the wing so I think mm-hmm. that helped me to get the feeling for the wing and yeah then I did like one or two sessions behind the boat so they and didn't lend I... you any of their gear or was it just too small uh, it was too small they okay. were starting on 50 liters of foil ball something like that 55 mm-hmm. or so without a water sports background, it's very, very, very hard <laughs> to learn on a 55 meter board. Uh, and, and it's I would say it's nearly, I mean, nearly impossible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even if you have a strong and, background, why, why make your life uh, miserable? I mean, <laughs> and yeah, I imagine they, I think they had just one board and mm-hmm. every time when there was wind, one of the guys was going out with this gear. <laughs> so, um, crazy. So, so and, and how was your learning experience on the SUP? Because I don't, rec- I don't recommend it to people actually to do it on the SUP, but, but what was oh, your experience? Oh, uh, it's pretty annoying <laughs> on the mm-hmm. SUP because you're losing so much height when you, uh, uh, floating around is the correct mm-hmm. word, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, you're trying to, to, you cannot go upwind really with the mm-hmm. SUP. Um, I, I don't know if you, there are some, this drift, drift of fins or how, do, how they call it, um, which should avoid it a little bit, but I had none of these, but yeah, it was, for me, it was already fun because I have no no um, windsurf background, so it was fun to to just cruise them or to g- glide um, over the water. Um, that was already a little bit fun, but overall, it's pretty annoying for in the first time. But I think when you start a new sport, it's annoying and and fun at the same time because mm-hmm. you learn new things, but actually, you want to learn faster and you want to be as good as the people that you see next to you Mm -hmm. but it takes a while Mm -hmm. okay and then you used you did a a session behind the boat with the uh, foiling and And then i combined yeah and why did you take a surf foil why did because um With uh, with wing foil equipment, you could probably start standing up, right, on the foil. I think we had no wing foil board then. Ah. It was just still the surf foil board. Okay. So. And how do how do you how do you get on the board? Like um, this is that is something that probably a lot of people are struggling with. With because you're laying in the water, you cannot stand on the board. Yeah. Did you have straps? No. Ooh, uh, no straps. That makes it even harder. Yeah, actually, it was. It's like this. Um, you're just laying on your like uh, on the board, like you do when you go regular surfing, pro surfing. And yeah. then I grab the the bar with one hand, and 
yeah, he, he started slightly to accelerate and then the board gets a little bit lift very slowly. And then I just tried to get up one knee or one foot and one on the knee. And then I just, when he further accelerate the boat, uh, the board is stabili uh, stabilizing. And then I was able to get up. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I, I, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, he was, or the boat was accelerating a little bit more and then you get the lift and then you come out of the water. And mm -hmm. I think when I tried it a couple of times, I already started to pump the board a little bit. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then you had the feeling for the foil and you were turning a little bit and stuff. Yeah. First of all, I had to learn how to turn a little bit to get out of the turbulences from the, from the, um, mm -hmm propeller or engine uh, yeah and yeah and then I, I I go from there and try to 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 do some um, maneuvers like going from the left to the right mm -hmm. speaking about turbulences interesting fun fact I I feel like like when you when you do usual water sports like windsurfing cat surfing you always are looking for a nice surface on the water but when you do foiling yeah. stuff like wing foiling you are looking at, you you don't have to worry so much about the surface but I also felt like on some spots when there are waves breaking in a strange way like there's some backwash you have some uh, some bubbles coming up Have you experienced that? And I and I, a couple of times I hit a bubble. Sure. And I, <laughs> I mean, when you go out in Denmark on a bigger day, when the waves are breaking, you have a lot of white water in the in yeah. the, and the white water is uh, extremely decreasing the lift of your foil because it's mm -hmm. not working so efficient anymore. Mm -hmm. And for sure, and even if you're winging behind another winger. And you are in the turbulences of his foil, you're recognizing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really, really crazy how, how sensitive you get to stuff that is happening below the surface. Yeah. But maybe once I'm still, still impressed how, how actually easy it is to foil through a breaking, uh, breaking wave. So. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you cannot escape anymore because the wave is breaking in front of you. Mm -hmm. And with a pretty long, long mass or even regular mass, you can just go through it with some speed and continue falling. And that's, I think it's impressive, but, in, but it's pretty easy. Actually, what, what mass lengths, sorry, sorry, but what mass lengths do you use? Actually, currently I'm using 75 centimeters uh, or 90 centimeters, but um, in the future I will use 82, the new 82 centimeter mass. So. And ah, okay. yeah, the mass is, is pretty important, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a lot of uh, yeah, pros and cons with the short and the longer mass. And mm -hmm. actually, I prefer longer mass. So like oh, really? 82 to 90, 82 to 90 centimeters. Yeah. Because, uh, you can, uh, ride in hard, uh, steeper angles. You can do harder turns on the wave. You get easily through, uh, yeah, through bigger waves for sure. But, um, another thing is that you have or can create more pop from my point of view with a longer mast. Yeah, because when you're flying your foil under the surface and you want to jump, you go down like this and then you pop out like this and you mm -hmm. can pop out in a steeper angle mm -hmm. and you can you can go higher with popping out with a steeper angle. And what do you think are the advantages of a slightly shorter mast like a 75? Mm -hmm. For sure, you don't need <laughs> uh, deep water to, to start. On some spots, you have to swim and pedal out a little bit with a 90 centimeter mast. And yeah, it's maybe in the beginning, it's a little bit better controllable. Mm. And you can pop out a little bit quicker. 
And yeah, I think it's it's the control point with a 75 centimeter mass. You have a little bit more control of the foil and I, a little bit less more. flex. Sorry. Sorry? Uh, and maybe a little more for everybody who's listening. We have a little delay, so it's kind of hard to to catch where someone is uh, finished and and where he's just taking a break. Sorry, Tim, I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, and for sure, longer mass has maybe a little bit more flex, but the new mass and the new materials are so good that you hardly recognize it. Mm -hmm. So seventy for sure is a little bit more stiff, but mm -hmm. the new mass. Uh, super stiff as well. So okay. Yeah, nice. Um, so we have. I, I I would like to dive into a couple of a couple of stuff. But before we head into some some quicker questions, maybe my last uh, longer one would be: How do you get through the short break? Like, what what are your yeah. um, uh, pro tips on getting <laughs> through short break? Because I feel still very intimidated by short break. Okay, yeah, I've got a very good uh, life hack <laughs> tip for, for getting through a short break. And and maybe um, also mention the, the wind direction because I feel like a side shore uh, wind feels mm. a lot safer to me like side on or onshore. Sure. I mean, on, onshore winds and shore break is like worst case. So... Mm. Um, you really have to think on, uh, think it depends on the shore break, but when it's on shore and you have shore break and maybe the wave period is like three, four seconds, it's hard to get out for sure. Okay. If it's side shore or side offshore, even, it makes your life a little bit easier. But, um, yeah, when there is a wave period of four seconds and strong shore break, it's still hard to get out. That's for sure. But when there is a shore break, which, which only breaks on the beach and not even before that you have like this white water rollers coming constantly in four to five seconds to you, it's doable to get out and to go through that shore break pretty easily. So, mm -hmm. and my, my tip here is, um, I grab my, my board one hand and the wing in the other hand. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, observe the shore break for sure. That's everybody doing. And I wait for <laughs> the window <laughs> to get, to go out. And for maybe it's sometimes it's like three, four seconds that there is no way. Then I just ran full power in the water and I jump like on a surfboard. I jump on my surfboard on, on, on the board and I forget about my wing. I just pedal out. And I try to get over the first waves and I pedal out like 10 meters or something like that um, where the waves are not breaking anymore. I forgot about my wing. I throw it away and just pedal as strong as I can. And what leash do so, you have? Um, actually, I combined a knee strap leash with a, a wrist leash from the wing. So we have the four... Uh, Four foot and five point five, I guess. Uh -huh. And I took the uh, knee strap leash and I screwed off the the strap and attached it to the wing leash, and then I attached it to my my uh, knee. And that's so five. You have the wing five on your is, knee. No, the wing leash. The wing yeah. leash has a small strap for the wrist. Yes. And I'm taking a knee strap leash. Yes. Get me the knee strap and put it on the wing leash. You know, okay. I swap the the the, the yeah. So the, 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 the yeah, okay. Uh-huh. And then I put it on my knee because um when I you have it on your ankle it's always lying on your board like a little snake. And when it's on your knee it's less probable that that it's lying on your board and you're Uh, putting your foot on it. But you are, just so that I get that right, you attach your wing leash to your knee. Exactly. With a knee strap. I've never heard that one. <laughs> yeah. 
and, and, and so you have your and, and uh, so when you pedal out, you have your board and your wing on on your above your calves, basically. Oh no no no! You got it right, uh, wrong. I have the. Let's start it all over. I have the okay. wing with my wing leash on the wrist. Okay. Regu that's normal stuff. And I have a, a leash, um, a knee strap leash. But my leash ah, that I use... your board leash. Yeah, my board leash is a wing leash. Ah, okay, I got it's it. It's a 5.5 okay. wing leash, but I yeah. just swapped out the strap because it's not going around my knee for a knee mm -hmm. strap. Yeah. So you wanted a short board leash? Exactly. Ah, okay, okay. I sorry. wanted a short board leash with that, yeah. which I can attach to my knee. Okay, got it. Uh, I was thinking because I was thinking about your wing because when you paddle and you have a wrist leash, I feel like uh, when the wing is catching uh, as the water in a, in a strange kind of way, it's super hard to paddle. If the wing is floating or, or flying, even it's it's super easy to paddle. Yeah, you cannot control the wing in in this yeah. moment. You just, yeah. I mean, if it's hard to paddle, it's like that in that moment. It's yeah. like for like five seconds pedaling full power yeah. out. I mean, if you want to go through the shore break and don't want to get washed back on this on the beach, that's yeah, that's part of the game, and that works pretty pretty good actually. And usually, okay. I have uh, the problem, well, the <laughs> the challenge that I have wind from the left and I'm goofy footer, so I can for sure I can start regular, but not as efficient. Uh, as I can do on my on my goofy side, mm -hmm. so I I really have to um, um, yeah do it like this um, to make sure that I not destroy it in the short break. Got it, got it. Okay, so um, interesting leash setup. Um, so maybe let's talk about some some quicker questions. So uh, we get a couple of quick questions from Instagram, um, and the first question is uh, <laughs> from from my buddy Frank, who I'm uh, wing foiling here uh, a lot with. Uh, who's your wing foil idol? Do you have someone that you where you where you want to copy the style or? Oh, actually, I'm not the this fanboy guy <laughs> but for sure um i mean there are a couple of super good wingers like balls and tituan and uh you name it mm -hmm. and yeah and i think everybody has his own good style and um, has a um, very impressive moves but yeah i'm not Really, I wouldn't say I'm a fan of anybody, but mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of respect for their achievement, the tricks, and how hard they push the sport. And yeah, that's it. Okay. Got it. Then there is a very interesting question. What are the most important wing sizes, especially for the Baltic Sea? Maybe um, you can describe briefly the conditions at the Baltic Sea and then maybe uh, yeah. tell us a little bit about the wing sizes. More, most important uh, wing sizes here are four and five meters. So mm -hmm. you need for the lighter days a five meter wing. And I think especially in the beginning, that's what you're using most of the time. And you can use it, I mean, even when it's a little bit stronger, it's also fine with a five meter. And it's when it's really, um, when it's starting to, to, to fire a little bit more, you're going on your fourth uh, meter wing mm -hmm. and use that one. And I think if, especially in the beginning, when you start wing falling, if it's getting, the wind is getting stronger, that the four meter is overpowered, I think you don't go out. <laughs> mm. And the Baltic Sea is shouldn't be underestimated. I mean, when there's wind for a three meter wing and there's a wave period of three to four seconds, it's it's not that easy to wing that in the beginning. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. it's easier to go out in Denmark um, on a on a day for a three meter wing than here on the Baltic Sea on the shore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you have there seven, eight, uh, 
eight meter waves periods and uh, next to the molds you have much cleaner waves and here it's choppy and and all that mm -hmm. so four so and four, five four and five four and five right. yeah um Next question I'm personally interested in. <laughs> it's coming from uh, from an Instagram account that it's called Wax Watch Wax, a very descriptive <laughs> Instagram account. Um, and uh, so uh, he wants to know, how do you get through the winter with warm hands on the water? So what, what, are, your, yeah. what are your tips? It's Getting already colder. starting here to get colder. Yeah, we had yesterday we had like 15 degrees that was fine you can we were able to go out without gloves. And but it's it's the temperature dropping under 10 degrees like 8 or something you need gloves and your hands are getting cold. So and my mm -hmm. tip is um first of all you need gloves in the winter to go out. I um I try to serve without gloves as long as I can but in the end you will put on gloves. <laughs> <laughs> and my tip is to get some, yeah, I'm using pretty thin glass. So like 1.5 millimeter or um, this claw glass 3.2 from mine uh, with two millimeter here on the hands. And that's, I think that's, that's my, my, my experience um, that I use for wing. But the trick is when it's pretty cold, go in the water for like 10 or 50 minutes and then go out and then shake your arms and hands like that, mm -hmm. that the blood is flushing before your hands are getting really, really cold because yeah, um, yeah then you will feel this very hard pain in the hands when the, when the blood is flushing back in or I don't know the medical <laughs> effects that happen in my hand. But it feels pretty bad. It's like somebody's poking your fingers uh, with a nail. And um, yeah, my tip is get yourself some good gloves that that you feel comfortable with and that are not um, yeah making your muscles sore very fast. And that's mm -hmm. a long way to find the right gloves. And I think mm -hmm. everybody is a little bit different. But then yeah. Make sure to warm up a little bit to get your blood flushing in the, in the in every part of your body, mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah, go hit the water for like 10, 15 minutes. Go out and try to warm up again, and then go from there and see if you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great advice. Great advice, uh, especially uh, I never I never thought about going in and out uh, to to warm up the hands. Um, I tried also to to rotate my arms on the water with my board that's doable but with the with the arm where i have the leash it's always uh yeah. it's, it's always a struggle yeah you can do it like this like sideways because you when you're sitting on the board you cannot really rotate it you can mm -hmm. like do like this ah. uh, to get, get the water uh, the blood back in the in the, your hands but it's not really working very good in, for some people and It works or it also depends on the day and how your body is working on that day mm -hmm. but yeah actually the best thing is to go out for like a minute warm up again and then go back in yeah great uh favorite wing fall move what's your what's your favorite move that you do on the water yeah actually um yeah my favorite move is actually a back loop currently mm -hmm. but Yeah, I don't know if it stays like this. Oh, actually, it's a back loop, and to get in the wave or on the wave, to get back on the fall, very difficult to get back on the fall from that move and to do it in the wave. But that's really fun, that trick. And But how do you do that one? Can you describe it to us a little bit? On the wave or yeah. on flat water? Oh, on the wave. The wave. Uh, it's, yeah, it's like. To me, it's also new to, to how to approach the wave a little bit. So I had to learn to jump not in the bottom of the waves. I, I prefer not the lid, but pretty high on the wave. 
and the wind direction must be appropriate to do it. And yeah, then I pop out pretty steep, fly the board up pretty steep, and then I just push the wing through, rotate, and try to get immediately back pressure in the wing and to land, land in the wave properly to get back on the foil. So that's that's uh, yeah, that's a fun move, but it's pretty difficult. It's easier to do a rally and to go back on the foil. Or recently, I did some 360, landed on the foil, and popped out directly again and did another 360. Mm -hmm. So like 360 into 360. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but we are currently also working on, or I'm currently training other moves, but you need also the suitable conditions for the extreme yeah. moves. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I think last night, uh, so that's a, that's a, one of the last questions about Müller, a.k.a. Uh, <laughs> uh, Radiculo, uh, slided into the questions and <laughs> he uh, asked about the key group doing backflips. I think that's a, a, a little bit of a, of an inside joke. But um, sure. Uh, but uh, yeah. But do, any any progressions on that one? Do you work on a backflip or? Yeah, uh, actually, um, we're working on that one. <laughs> I tried I tried it a couple of times before, but I never had the right technique. And and then I tried it again last th uh, Thursday, and um, on flat water with a four meter wing, which is. I think not the perfect conditions for learning a backflip, mm -hmm. but no excuses here. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm working on it now. And I got into the re rotation last uh, Thursday. So yeah, I'm keen to do it. And I think I can make it if the, if I get some good conditions, um, or at least I hope mm -hmm. to make it pretty soon. Mm -hmm. But Yeah, most of the time I have wind from the left and I prefer wind from the right because I cannot do all the moves with uh, on both sides. So mm -hmm. um, it's I think it's easier with a little kicker to do it. Mm -hmm. But Klaas recently did it in on Mauritius. So very clean, very cool. Ah. He he just just did it. And yeah, very, very good. I mean he 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 talked about the trick and he said oh, I have to work on it sometime and then I had he I think he trained it one day on, on flat and the next day he did it so that's very efficient and he's rotating super clean yeah I, 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 I had class on the podcast um, and uh, and I asked him about it and he said you know yeah, I don't want to hurt myself but I think because he has this strong windsurfing background and he can do a lot of rotations of windsurfing he was He, he seemed to be pretty confident that he could do it. So uh, you have to put your mind yeah. where your mouth is. So uh, great. Uh, cool that he did it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And he, that's that's uh, a trick where you have to commit. You have yeah. definitely... There's there's no, uh, no middle way to do it, <laughs> let's say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You really have to lean back and fully commit. I saw uh, I saw Kai Lenny uh, do a backflip lately, which which I've never seen before. He was doing it on a on a wave, so on a little kicker wave. Mm. Um, I don't know if you saw it, and he did the backflip, and it was a pretty high one. And in before the landing, he used his wing to stop the rotation. Yeah, uh, that looked pretty cool because it looked so controlled. You know, the, the backflips that I've seen were like full on commitment, and then just flipping no i Did think you when the... you uh, yeah I, i saw it and i think um it's the same with when heading is doing the push loop or doing the back loop or this backflip thing you're just when you finish the rotations you're opening up a wing to stop mm -hmm. the rotation and that's what we saw on on kalani's video he yeah. just stopped by opening up everything when he was done with his rotation and then he just fell down like one or one one or two meters yeah so 
seems like there's potential for the double as well. <laughs> yeah, but Tit Titwan already did one, huh? Or did it, yeah, that's yeah. that's absolutely crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in windsurfing, they are working on a triple rotation, so there's so maybe maybe one questions uh, back to Bals. When are you doing the double, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, um, he is probably uh, uh, full on committed to it once he has the right conditions. At least as far as I know him, he's he's so crazy. He he's he's for sure th thinking about that already. Yeah, I'm curious to see that one because yeah, uh, you need also the appropriate backflip technique to do double rotation mm -hmm. so and there are if you study the backflip let's say you recognize that there are like i don't know five six different techniques to do a backflip mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay that's an interesting interesting follow-up probably because uh, i i think let's let's uh, wrap it up here um Tim, uh, if someone wants to get in touch with you or has some some questions, uh, where can people reach out? Yeah, the uh, best thing is to reach out on Instagram. Tim mm -hmm. Taudin is my Instagram account. Uh, just shoot me a message and yeah, I will answer. Nice. nice. So I hope uh, that you uh, get some windy days uh, in the next couple of weeks. And, and maybe not too cold that you don't need to use the gloves already. Yeah, me too. I hope the uh, storms are coming up now. We, actually, our season starts now because summer is not that windy and autumn is, uh, this is much better. But the yeah. problem is that the days are getting shorter. Yeah. Yeah. Days are getting shorter and the sessions also get shorter. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so we have to be more efficient <laughs> yeah <laughs> more commitment yeah thanks for taking the time um have a nice day and i'll talk to you soon oh, you too bye yeah bye. talk to you soon thank you for having me bye Guys, thank you very much for listening and tuning in today. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Give us a comment. Give us a, a review on Apple Podcasts, whatever you can do. It really supports this podcast and it really helps us to get it out there. And um, yeah, as always, if you see some wind on the forecast, go wing it. <laughs>